Congratulations, you have now completed 10 steps of learning Spring MVC. There are 15 more steps to go and let's get started with this step which is numbered as step 21 but it's actually the step 11 in Spring MVC. What we, we do in this particular step? We want to understand a very important concept. We want to understand what is the difference between session and request. What is the difference between a session scope and a request scope? We will look at how something called add session attributes. It's another annotation that we are going to learn how with add session attributes you can put something in the scope of session. We will also discuss the important things about modal, request and session and how you can make best use of them with the Spring MVC framework. Let's take a quick look at where we are with respect to our web application. So I type in localhost colon 8080 slash login and I enter the user ID in 28 minutes and password as dummy. This is where I end up. What I would want to add now is we have already created a list to do's page. So I'll add a link to the list to do's page in here. For now let's not make it very fancy. We'll make it very simple with simple text. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. So I'll go to the welcome.jsp. This is the code in here right now. So to this JSP, I would want to add in a link. So what I'll do is I'll add in a new line. BR in HTML is new line. So in the new line, after the new line, I would want to add in. Now you can manage your to-dos. And I would want to make manage your to-dos a link. So I'll say A. In HTML, A stands for link. And I would want to put in, let's use small. It doesn't really matter, caps are small. But you should be consistent. So, href is the URL. Where do we want to send him to? We want to send him to list to-dos. That's the URL we have configured. Take a quick look at the to-do controller to make sure that the URL is right. So, list to-dos, that's the URL. So that's the URL we have configured and I would want to start managing the to-dos in there. That's very good. So let's go ahead and refresh the page and see what happens. I'm doing a control R, refresh, and now you can manage the to-dos. So I'll click the link and it shows my to-dos perfect. But what I would want to be able to see is my name also in here. The name we have entered is in 28 minutes. So I would want to see in 28 minutes also somewhere in here. So what I would want to do is go to the todo.jsp. Actually, it's list todos.jsp. So list todos.jsp. And I would want to say, hi, dollar name. That's basically my name. I would want my name to come in there. So let's refresh. It's just saying hi. And it's not saying uh, my name at all. What I want to do is actually, let's take a step back and let's, the name I have entered in here. So I'm entering a name he here, submit query. You can see that the name is printed properly in here. So welcome in 28 minutes and password is dummy. Let's, we don't need the password anymore. So I'll quickly remove the password on the welcome page. So let's just say it says welcome my name. That's good. So that's perfect. So welcome name is shown on the screen and that's exactly what I want. But when I go to manage to do's, you'd see that hi, my name, my name is not being printed. So my name is getting lost. So it's not being shown at all. Let's see what's happening in the background. So what happens in the background? How do we see that? Right click inspect element. Let's go to network and let's type in dummy as the password and submit query. We are sending a post request for login and in the post request is our name. So we are sending a name. What we are doing in the login servlet is we are taking the name and putting it into the model. So what are we doing in the login servlet? Actually the login controller. I'm still in the servlet world. It's actually login controller. And in the login controller, you'd see that I'm putting a name into the model. The name which I'm getting from the request, I'm putting it in the model. And that's why it's available for the JSP, welcome.jsp. But after this, the name is no longer available because the next request, manage your to-dos, when I click this, I'm clicking this, it sends a get request. But inside the params, 
there is nothing in here. So one of the ways I can pass the thing is I can say question mark name is equal to dollar name. So I'm passing a parameter. This is called a get parameter. So I'm saying name is equal to dollar name. Let's refresh the page and manage your to do's and still it's not coming up because we have added in the name to the request. So you'd see that in the get request in the network tab, if I select this, you'd see that there is a parameter name in 28 minutes being sent, but we are not putting it in the model yet. So the list to do's function controller. So let's go to the list to do's controller. Uh, actually, it's to do controller. It's not adding, uh, it's not capturing the parameter which is being passed in. So similar to the login controller, I would need to add in a request parameter. So I would need to add a request parameter name. Now I can put model dot get attribute, sorry, add attribute name, comma name. And now finally, I see my name on the screen. Hi in 28 minutes. So that's good. But the thing is, we are doing so many things. So let's say in every page in the application, I want to show the name. Can I send it with every request? I would not be able to send it with every request because now with every link which is there in the application, I need to keep sending it and keep accepting it. So everywhere in the link, I need to keep adding in 28 minutes as a parameter and in every controller, I would need to keep accepting it. That's not going to be easy. A request scope is basically one call, one request from the browser to the server and the response back to the browser. When I do this particular refresh, that's one request scope. So a request went to the server. So we are requesting list to do's name is equal to in 28 minutes. This goes to the server and we get back a response. So the time between the initiation of the request and the time we get back the response is called the request scope. Anything you put in the model in Spring MVC is part of the request scope by default. So whatever I put in the model here, it's only available during the request scope, during the handling of this request. So once the mode, once the request is handled, attribute here gets removed from the model or actually the model completely gets destroyed and there is nothing present after the request. So every time we would want to add in the name on the screen, I would need to pass in the whole thing. That's why there is a scope called session which is present in web programming. So if the name of the user who has logged in, so in 28 minutes is the name of the user who is logging in and we would want to store this across the length of the user session. We don't want to keep putting it each time into the session. So that's where the session scope comes into picture. So session scope is basically from the start, from login to the logout or until your ex session expires. So until then you want to keep the name handy in session. So that's basically where the session scope is used. And with Spring Framework, how do you put things in session? Typically, if we were using servlet JSP application, we would say request.getSession dot set attribute or put attribute, whichever one is right. That's what we would do. But how do we make attributes available in session with Spring MVC? Let's see how to do that now. What I'll do is I'll quickly revert the changes which we have made. We don't want an attribute name in here. I'll remove the request param as well because I don't want to pass in the request param and also I'll go to the welcome page and remove the name. I would want to just send it to list to do's and I would want to use name from this session. Now if I refresh the page now, you'd see that hi is only printed. The name, my name is not really printed. So I would want to change that. How do I do that? I would need to put it in session. How do I put the name in session? That's the question. So now I would want to put this attribute name in session and I would want to make it available in every model. How do I do that? The way we do that in Spring is by using an at annotation called at session attributes. So you can put any number of names in here and all those attributes would become session attribute. So whenever I put something in the model in here in with the name name, then it would be automatically be available as a session attribute. It's so simple and with simplicity comes the complexity that it might be abused. 
So be careful about what you put in session. The only things which should be in the session should be the things which are really needed as part, I mean, which are nearly really generic across the application. Do not use session attributes to control the flow of a web application. That's really a bad practice. Everything that you put in session would occupy memory. Name is a simple thing, but let's say I'm putting a big object of size 1 MB in memory. Then this would live in the server memory for the duration of the user session, which is 30 minutes. And let's say there are 1000 such users. Then you are talking about 1000 MB of memory, which is just occupied by this particular thing. So be really careful about what you put in session. Now we have put an attribute in session. Now we want to make use of this attribute from session in the to-do controller. And what I would need to do is also put that in there. So session attributes name. That's it. Let's see what would happen right now. I'll go back to login. Do a refresh on the login. So I've done a post. So now it's there. And now I'm clicking manage to-dos. And there you go. Hi in 28 minutes. You'd see that in the get, we are not passing in the parameter name. So we are not getting it from the request parameter, but actually we are getting it from the session. So we have set in 28 minutes into session and we have made use of it from session. Actually, the change which we had to do was very simple. Just add an annotation at session attributes name and at session attributes name. As soon as we put this annotation, what would happen is if we put anything in model, that with that name, which is in here, it would become a session attribute. And also, we can read it in the similar way. So, as soon as I put at session attributes name, that would be part of the model. And so, we can use that in the JSP. One thing you would have already noticed with respect to Spring MVC is we are not really talking with request or session directly. Always, we are talking to model. So we always talk to model and even the session attributes, we are saying the name of the model object. So every time we are talking to the model and not really anything related to HTTP request or HTTP session. One of the famous books for Spring Framework is Rod Johnson's book, Professional Java Development with the Spring Framework. In this book, Rod Johnson tells us why we should use model. It's because we have to be as view independent as possible and we would want to be able to incorporate view technologies not bound to HTTP servlet requests. That's the reason why we are going to use model. Until the next step, bye-bye. Thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At In 28 Minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You'll find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You'd find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.